Hi guys, and welcome to Honey and Me. I'm Susan, but this isn't Honey. This is our Jayco travel trailer. Today, I'm going to share with you a recipe for a biscuit mix that I have been making for over 30 years. It's like Bisquick, but it's homemade. And then we're going to mix up some biscuits and bake them on the cooktop. So stick around, and I'll show you how to do it. recipe you only need four ingredients to make up the mix flour baking powder salt and a pound of lard or shortening I use lard and you'll need a container to store the biscuit mix in I like to use an ice cream pail it's the perfect size to hold the mix it also gives you an excuse to buy a bucket of ice cream but really who needs an excuse this is my bucket and you can see I've written biscuit mix on it so there's never any confusion as to what's inside. My bucket is now empty and I need to make a mix to refill it. This mix is really really handy in the trailer and in honey because I can make it up ahead of time and don't have to bring all the extra ingredients with me if I don't need to. For this recipe you're going to need nine cups of flour. I've measured seven cups of all-purpose flour and two cups of whole wheat flour just because I like to add a little bit of whole wheat flour to our biscuits. You can use just all-purpose flour. You're also going to need baking powder, a pound of shortening or lard. I prefer lard and the box is one pound so you don't even have to measure that as well as salt. So let's mix this up in our ice cream pail. One quarter cup of baking powder. One and a half tablespoons of salt. That's about a half. And we're going to add the shortening or lard, but we're going to cut it into pieces as we add it. It's easiest to use it at room temperature, but if your lard or shortening is cold out of the fridge or freezer, you can also grate it using a cheese grater. But mine is nice and soft. You have two choices as to how you want to mix the lard or shortening into your flour mix. You can either use a pastry blender, which cuts the shortening into pieces as it blends it in with the flour, or you can just use your hands. I have always just preferred my hands. I find it faster and more effective. So if you prefer, you can use a pastry blender, but I'm just going to use my hands. It's a lot funner too. You get to muck it in there. You want to work the shortening into the flour mix, squishing it between your fingers, squish up the big pieces. What I will usually do is make this mix up at home if we're going camping so that it's ready to use and I don't have to make a mess in the trailer. You want to dig down there, make sure you've got all the flour mixed in. Break up any big pieces of shortening into the flour. Now we have our biscuit mix all mixed up in our ice cream pail and we can give it a good shake. Make sure you hold on to the lid so it doesn't pop off. That ensures that any flour that didn't get picked up from the bottom of the bucket is now mixed in with the shortening or lard. Now we're ready to make some biscuits. We're going to need a bowl to mix our biscuits in. You need to add two cups of mix to the bowl and then half a cup of milk. Two cups of mix. Add 
and half a cup of milk. This is a quarter cup measure. And we're going to use a fork to mix it up. When you've worked all of the dry ingredients into the milk, it'll form a bit of a ball. And we'll start using our hands again. And now we're going to roll it out. I like to use a flexible cutting mat. You can sprinkle a little bit of flour on there. And I usually will fold it over a few times. It tends to make the biscuit have little layers in it. Now just pat it out. So you want it to be about half an inch thick. You can see it's about a half an inch thick. I'm going to use a plastic cup to cut circles out of the biscuit dough to make round biscuits. You can also just cut it up into pieces like a pizza or into squares, whatever you like. But I'm using a cup to cut out the pieces. Take the rest of the dough and just form it into another ball. And press it out again into a half inch thick piece and cut out some more circles. They don't have to be perfect circles, they're all going to taste the same. So this one has about enough dough to make one more biscuit so I'm just going to form it into a ball and press it out to another biscuit. So this recipe will make seven biscuits that are about two and a half inches across. Now I'm going to heat up the cast iron frying pan on the cooktop because this is what we're going to bake them in. I'm going to spray the cast iron pan with a little bit of cooking spray just so the biscuits don't stick. My cooktop has a burner that is a higher heat than the other two. That's this one right here. I'm going to be using one that doesn't go as high. I don't want the biscuits to cook too fast and burn. We're going to let that warm up and then we're going to put our biscuits in it. While we're waiting for our pan to heat up so we can put our biscuits in it, I'm going to make a cup of coffee. While our coffee's brewing, the pan is ready, so I'm going to put the biscuits into the pan. And I'm going to lower the heat a little bit more because I want them to bake slowly.
have flipped over some of the biscuits, but because the pan is bigger and it hits the back of the cooktop here, I needed to turn the pan to get those last two to brown better. These biscuits are looking really good and they smell delicious. While we're waiting for the biscuits to finish up in the frying pan, I wanted to let you know that you can also bake these biscuits in the oven. Set your temperature to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and bake them for about 10 to 12 minutes. They're just about done. This recipe is very versatile. Not only can you make biscuits with it, but there are other things you can make with it too. And I'm going to be sharing those with you in future videos. So make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and ring the notification bell so you'll be notified when I release those videos. Looks like they're done. These turned out great. I'll show you how they come apart. They come apart in little layers. These go great with soup or chili or stew or spaghetti, whatever you like. We really like to eat them just with some butter and some honey or jam. They're delicious.